guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're installing this 75 kilowatt PTO driven generator onto this Ford F550. A lot of work, so let's get moving. This is officially the first project we're gonna be working on in here. I'm gonna have Jim explain this one to you. This is a little bit of a complex issue here. We ordered a whole stack of these trucks. I um, sold a whole bunch of them, they did pretty well. We got some customers that needed some slight modifications. First problem with these is they're all two wheel drive. You have to custom order it in the four wheel drive. And so most of our customers around here want a four wheel drive. This body on this truck is a concrete cutting body, it's, uh, more commonly known as a saw body. If you look at it, it's built a little different than your standard service body. And you see these companies out cutting concrete. And these concrete saws they have are look like a giant, almost like a lawnmower if you ride on it. And they have all these great big generators behind these trucks. And then they hook the generator up. These concrete cutting saws are all electric. So this truck is set up with 3,300 pound lift gate. So your operator would drive the concrete saw on here. Then this lift gate will lift it up and they'll drive it in the back of the truck. Well, what our customer wants is he doesn't want to have to pull this big towable generator. So we reached out to a company called Real Power. They make this unit right here. This is a PTO driven generator. This unit won't work on a Ram chassis because the Ram chassis has a six speed transmission. We had to find a Ford chassis that has a 10 speed transmission. That 10 speed transmission will turn this PTO faster and it'll run a bigger generator. So this real power here will uh, put out like 70 kilowatts of power. So we're gonna pull this body off this Ram. We're gonna bring in this four wheel drive Ford. We're gonna swap out the transfer case, basically a Ford factory transfer case. They had to put a pass through one to run this PTO driveline through. The way it works is your PTO comes off your transmission here and then drive shaft has to come back, go to the generator and then the drive shaft has to come out to go to your four wheel drive. So that generator drive shaft has to go through the transfer case. Next step is have Sam start cranking on this thing. introduce you to one of my new favorite guys in the shop is Sam. Sam Rips. Sam is it Rip? No, it's Rip. It's Rip. 1P. Yeah. 1P. Sam is learning the ways of the metal and uh, Aaron is teaching him. It's fun to watch and the dynamic between the two is going to be what makes this channel interesting because Aaron has been passing down a lot of skills that he's learned through years of fabrication to Sam. And Sam is just the sponge that's going to be soaking up all of Aaron's knowledge, willing, able, and teachable to just get things done here in the shop. So can't wait for Sam to just grow past all of our expectations to become master fabricator. I don't think it'll take long. So we have a 75 kW generator. Uh, we're got the PTO in, got all that stuff going. Me and Sam are about to drop this into the frame rails, get it mounted up, get the angle set, and then we're gonna start running the drive shafts. So that's our next step. Um, first time doing one of these, uh, it looks like a pretty awesome kit. Tons of ground clearance. It sits like almost flush to the top of the frame rails. Uh, we're liking it so far. It's pretty awesome. Clear? Are we putting the set, yeah. We're putting it. The... Yep, uh, let's slap that spacer in. Clear? Clear. Cool. Let's, uh... Us. We're getting the drive shafts bolted in. We're getting it bolted up. We'll get it lifted up into place and we'll be tying the PTO to the generator next. Just it right there. No, oh, no. All right, Sam and Aaron are done prepping the chassis for the bed. Um, Aaron has been busy putting the generator in place and wiring everything, while Sam has been prepping the frame for the actual bed itself. Um, 
but this is the last time you'll see the chassis without the the bed on it so take a good look but look at and appreciate how big this generator is so like i said before this is a pto gen driven generator and this is a problem solver for a lot of businesses so take a good look because this is going under the bed from now on Tuesday morning, what we've done on this truck so far, uh, we've done the transfer case, PTO driven generator, uh, reinstalled the bed, uh, moved the def to the back, and now we've got to build the uh, toolboxes that go between the saw body itself and the cab of the truck. Uh, this is a special request from the customer. Um, they've got to put some tracks in there for the saw itself. So I think what Aaron was saying is the toolboxes will go about right here. And then there will be like a like a basket on top that will allow people to put things in and out. But the the rails just should slide in this toolbox. It should be a really convenient place for this company to put their uh, their equipment. So we basically drew some little tube structure here, which we're gonna skin with a sheet metal and put on this uh, truck over here. It's gonna take up the gap in between the front of the bed and the back of the cab. But we're starting off with just Bentec, just get a whole bunch of cut dimensions. Um, and yeah, we're going to go to the saw and start cutting all this stuff out. We're going to be building this bed section out of rectangle that we had out back. It's just an uh, inch and a half by two and a half. And then 14 gauge um, hot rolled pickled and oiled plate. It's made to be strong and it's made to essentially hold the pieces that the guys need for their concrete saws. Right now we're getting uh, all the uh, rectangle tube cut. Basically we're gonna clamp them to our fixture table. Sam's actually gonna build this one out by himself uh, just to kind of get a little bit more experience. He's gonna pretty much handle it from here on out. toolbox for the, the nap ride build. Um, we wanted to film it, we wanted to film everything, but Aaron had to go to California early this morning. So he finished that at like four o'clock this morning. So not a ton of filming on that, but he went above and beyond on it. We're super grateful that he uh, he busted that out last night so we can get it off to Power Coat right now. We should have it back Monday morning so we can get this truck off to the customer next week. All right, now that we got the lifts in, we can actually get under our truck to work on it. So what we've been working on this whole time is installing this real power system. We've had to install the PTO onto the transmission, 
bolts onto the left hand side of the Ford's transmission and then we had to drop the stock transfer case and install a pass-through transfer case to accommodate for the four-wheel drive. Now we have the drive lines passing through the transfer case and on the way back through this carrier bearing to the generator that you saw earlier but Sam's finishing up on the wiring to the actual control panel but all the installation of the 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 hardware is done so we're able to move on from that we're on to wiring um, we're waiting for the toolbox to get back from powder coat and this thing's done these are brand new trucks that we're working on they literally have less than 20 miles on them they're in demo mode still um, just really nice setup from real power to just makes everything you know look factory uh, there's nothing on here that doesn't look like it should be here uh, that's the why, you know, we go with this system. Okay. Basically, the truck is just a regular pickup truck right now. It does have a generator on it. So, in order for us to get this going, we have to set the e-brake. And then we have to hit the upfitter switch. All right, we'll hit the upfitter switch. Now you hear the PTO just kicked on. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna raise the engine RPMs up to 15, or 1400 to 1600, and it's gonna maintain the engine RPMs at that. If we put more load on the generator, the uh, truck will automatically uh, do what it needs to do to basically keep that sitting right at like 1500, 1600 RPMs. Um, from there, also, if I was to take the ignition out, I just turned the key off, I pulled the key out. The truck's still running. As long as the upfitter switch is on the on position and the generator's engaged, the truck's gonna continue to run. No one can steal the truck though, because I have the key. You can't put it in gear, you can't do anything, you can't take it, the brake off, nothing. So if I'm gonna step out now, if I lock the truck, Truck's locked, truck's still running. So basically we have a mobile generator that we park somewhere. We leave the truck there, we go do our work and not have to worry about someone hopping in the truck and stealing it, anything like that. So I'm gonna hit unlock, come back in, put the key back in and uh, we'll go ahead and get this thing hooked up to a Tesla. The amount of power that this generator can make is essentially power like 10 household homes uh, without average power consumption. And, or you can charge probably six uh, EVs like a Tesla. Um, this thing makes a ton of power. We'll do a test charge on Tyson's Tesla today. So uh, his car is the, I guess, first car we'll charge or first thing we'll actually put electricity to, actually. Hi, Tyson. Hello. You want some power? I do. We got some in this cabin. Look at us. Look at us. That's uh the honors, so I can be the one that breaks the Absolutely. Ready? I don't know who wired these things. Three, two, one, go! What's up, dude? Wait for it. It's green. It's, it's green. charging. It's charging? It's charging. All right. So we are charging currently at 32 amps. Nice. So 238 volts. If we have the other charger, the other charger would have plugged in. We, that would have done 40 amps. This uh, circuit I'm tied into is just our baby, uh, 30 amp, single phase. So do we have? Do we have a? Uh... We have the big dogs, and we could always increase that circuit, but yeah. those are our three phase circuits. Gotcha. Those are for big things, gotcha. really big things. So, but even though we're just charging one car right now, um, if we were to wire in another sub panel and branch this off, we'd be able to charge off the same generator, probably about eight of these cars in about eight hours. So. It's a lot of power. It's a ton of power. I'm impressed. I like this thing. This truck's like a mobile power plant. It could be used for charging Teslas or it could be used for power and big concrete saws. Um, I mean, you could pop like power or mobile shop with this uh, generator setup if you had to. If you had a three phase shop running basic like fab equipment, this would do it. It's pretty awesome.